everybody. We got a fun one today, you know, for a change and easy, too. It was easy for me. Let me explain. My guest today is journalist Molly Jung Fast, and she's also a uh, podcaster, Fast Politics, a great podcast, which I've been on several times and which is always fun and easy. She always has three great guests and each one speaks on either one or two, maybe even three topics that are in the news, politics or in public policy, where they all intersect, of course. And it's always fun and easy. But what I do is take one subject, usually with someone who's written a book or a magazine article, say in Foreign Affairs magazine, and discuss that topic. And then I got to read that damn book or know that subject. This one. We just go all over the place, and it was so much fun and easy, and we laugh a lot. We la- laugh a lot, some at the dark ones. We Dolly Lithwick last week, we were talking about the Supreme Court, and uh, whew, it was dark, but she has uh, a great sense of humor, and I like dark humor, and uh, so does Molly, and boy, oh, boy. Also, she laughs. She laughs a lot. Now, that's one of the things uh, that uh, I complain about on on this podcast. I don't have like Conan does, like a Sona Mosasian, who just has the best laugh in the studio with him. And I just all I got is Peter in in D.C. Peter is in D.C. Peter, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. You, You laugh a lot, right? I'm a la- I, I think I'm a laugher, yeah. Yeah, and when we were doing this in Washington, when I was in Washington, uh, I could see you laughing in the booth. I could see you yeah. through the glass laughing. I'm going like, this is doing me no good on the podcast, the laughing. <laughs> see, that's what I meant. You know, Dana Carvey, when I had him on, we were talking about how he created the Bush character, and basically we were doing it kind of together. He went that thing over there doing that thing. And I laughed. And he, when we discussed this, he said, laughter is the oxygen of comedy. And I, uh, it was so great <laughs> uh, to have Molly on because she's a big laugher. So I think everybody, you're going to really, really enjoy this one. And uh, I enjoyed making it. And it was easy. And I think we're just going to have Molly on every other week <laughs> so it'll it'll cut down on my uh, reading list but but i i the thing is and molly as a journalist reads all the time and i read all the time but i mean reading like something in depth which ugh, i hate so we'll be right back with molly jung fast it's a great one and a fun one you know for a change I hope he uses the 14th Amendment because I don't like that he is negotiating with them in the way that he's negotiating with, especially because he said he wouldn't negotiate with them. I'm a fan of his and I feel like he has over delivered on elections and that, you know, a lot of the things he's doing quietly are quite smart in a way that maybe sometimes we're talking about Biden. We're talking about Biden here, but uh, it it does feel like he could really have come in there and been like, I'm not going to negotiate your made up thing. Am I hearing some music in the background? It's a siren. Oh, yeah. It's a sort of policey musical. We have special sirens up here. Uh, Here we go. It's gone. But I would say like in my mind, part of me thinks I would have loved it if he had gone in and been like, I'm not going to negotiate negotiate your ridiculous made up thing that you started doing in 2008. Yeah, well they started doing really in 2011. That was the one that really came so close to going off the cliff and where S&P downgraded our bonds and it, it cost billions of dollars right. and but then since then they that's now what they do. When when you have a democratic Democrat. president of course, when uh, they raised the debt ceiling three times uh, during Trump, neither we nor uh, the Republicans uh, blinked and I, right. right? In their defense, it was in the service of tax cuts for billionaires, which, as you and I in know, their defense. is. Right. <laughs> Being sorry. Is, is there one policy position? Well, 
that's what his uh, tax cut was, was mainly for, for high income people. And also increasing the deficit <laughs> by exactly. $1.9 trillion, which they didn't mind then. They don't mind huge deficits when they are in the White House. They never do. And if you look at the history of this, of course, deficits are much higher during Republican presidents, right? Right. So I don't know what the exact numbers are, but if you look at Reagan and if you look at Bush 1 and Bush 2 <laughs> right. and Trump, uh, much, much higher than the deficits during Democratic presidents. Clinton, of course, had a balanced budget that he handed off to W, who said, well, then we need a tax cut. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> exactly. and then we need a, a great recession. I don't think George W. Bush created one job. <laughs> net one job in his. I mean, I'm sure. There were jobs on the farm, on his Texas farm. No, well, I don't, I'm net. Okay, net. All right. Net. Yeah. No, and I think because uh, HW had a recession too, I had this at the time. There was one point at which, remember the, the month that Obama took office, we lost 800,000 jobs in our country. Yes. 800,000 jobs in our country. Uh, so I think this is true that during both Bush administrations, there was not one net new job, which means that if it had just been Bushes throughout our entire history, no American would have ever worked. <laughs> I mean, I think that seems like a very uh, measured and calm analysis. And probably right. People would forage for food. <laughs> Look. In the wilderness. Here's the thing about the bushes. He's not a very good painter. This kind of <laughs> haunts me a little bit because I don't know if he's good or bad. I, I'm not a judge of art. Okay. Okay. And I never claim to be. And if I ever have... <laughs> <laughs> if I ever have somebody on who knows a lot about art and that's all we're discussing is art. Right. I may pretend then that I know a lot about art. <laughs> yes. But not, not for this one. All right. So I don't know that. But what haunts me about him here is that he paints veterans. Right. Right. That's a big theme. I'm not sure if that's all he paints, but he paints veterans. I, th I think the guy must be a little haunted by what was a disaster from m so many angles, uh, including the men and women uh, that we lost there, so the, the troops, and, also, and, and who have been wounded and are veterans with all kinds of wounds and PTSD, et cetera, but also the destabilization of the region. Yeah. And then also that it took our focus off of the rest of the world, China, et cetera, for so long that we kind of, you know, we were just thinking about jihadists and terrorists and not thinking about the rest of the world. There, there, there's me. There's that. There's that. <laughs> but I have a little Rachmanis for somebody who fucked up so badly. Yeah. Um, and paints veterans. I mean, as a Nepo baby myself. Oh, that means that because your mom is is rich and famous. It, yes, it, not that rich, unfortunately. And okay, also famous. not that famous, but But Nepo know. has rich implied, but <laughs> right. okay, tell tell who your mom is. So my mom is a is a writer, but but who's not that neither rich nor famous, but it's still the Nepo baby. She was very status famous for for oh, in the seventies. But tell what, say who she is. Her name is Erica Jong. But anyway, but Erica Jong and she the, wrote uh yeah. her flying. But the point is is about this is that I do relate to the being the disappointment, you know, in the legacy. So I do want to say that his father <laughs> was also really terrible in many ways. Why? How? How is he so terrible? Well, I mean, he wa he had he had very similar Reagan esque policies. Oh yeah, he was a a, a Republican uh, with those policies, but not. I I just feel like temperamentally not as bad 
I mean, look, um, I mean, what I cut him slack for, and this is the wrong thing to cut him slack for. Uh, we had Dana Carvey make fun of him, right, for four years or more, and also he accepted the fact that he lost the election. <laughs> right, that's true. <laughs> we forget that. That's right. Uh, he was the last Republican to do that. <laughs> right, the very unusual move. Yeah, he may go down in history as the last Republican who ever accepted that he lost an election. Well, Mitt, let us not forget Mitt. You could have had Mitt. Oh, that's right. But he wasn't the last Republican president. It's hard. No. It's hard. Right, that's to, true. It's hard to say I won. I'm not president. <laughs> but I'm going to still be president. And then you'd be crazy. But no, you got to give that uh, to H.W. And also what I give to him is that he, he invited Dana to the White House. Yeah. But anyway, so the point is, I, I think this debt ceiling thing, which is where we had started out. Uh, is completely created by the Republicans. And I think we both do wish that Biden would go back at that. Well, them. the thing about the 14th Amendment and uh, discuss this with Paul Krugman, what I wanted, I mean, we talked about all the different strategies here. The strategy we didn't talk about is the one that he seems to be doing, which is actually having a negotiation and actually probably giving up way too much. Right. Uh, but um, the strategy I wanted was 14th Amendment giving the Supreme Court like two days. Right. And, and so that they would just have to go like, okay, uh, on top of everything else, <laughs> <laughs> uh, getting rid of Roe. Right. Do we also want to be known as the court that crashed the worldwide economy and give them just two days. <laughs> and to me, that would have been like, okay, guys, do it yourself again. <laughs> I mean, I, I would have loved that. I mean, that would have been really fun. Well, which is, I think, uh, uh, myth, of, uh, myth of Prestone. Prestone. Myth of Prestone went to the Fifth Circuit yesterday, but I don't, I don't think they've made a ruling yet. They haven't made a ruling, but it questions and the comments doesn't sound good. And they're sort of made up of the same kind of uh, judges, i.e. very, very conservative, anti-choice <laughs> <laughs> right. judges. So my feeling is they're going to send it back to the Supreme Court, which it gives them another decision. Didn't they say after Roe, after overturning Roe, after Dobbs, saying like, okay, that's it. We're done. Now it goes to the states, <laughs> right? I mean, they said that with a concurrent opinion from Justice Clarence Thomas that uh, we should correct the error that led to same-sex marriage, same-sex sex, and birth control. he wasn't going to do abortion again. That's right. That's right. right. He was just going to do all the other rights. Yeah. So yeah. it was, uh, yeah, same-sex marriage and Lawrence also uh, right. sodomy. sodomy. Right. Was, sodomy. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want to do uh, Virginia. The um, Yes. Interracial marriage. Loving versus Virginia. How did right. I forget loving? Yeah. Too, he'd, a little too close to home. Yeah, and also, according to, who was it? Oh, Dahlia again, Dahlia Lithwick. No, the best. The best, the best, said there is a distinction in the jurisprudence of uh, Loving versus Virginia from Lawrence and um, Obergefell. But if he gets very bored with Ginny, he might change his mind. Who could get bored with Ginny? <laughs> <laughs> and, and also she's a good source of uh, uh loot evidently <laughs> listen she may dis she may spend too much time on facebook and he may decide but here's know. my question on this on the loot that she got yeah. how much money did she get from uh leonard leo, from Ke leonard leo through the the uh, best yeah. <laughs> george's wife kellyanne conway okay but he wrote down he wrote down in writing, of course, don't <laughs> tell anybody. Now, here's my question. <laughs> you know, what my question is, can you tell what my question is going to be? <laughs> is Leonard Leo stupider than Trump? It's the, the, that's the inference of the question, <laughs> which is why would you write down? <laughs> don't tell anybody. You know, it, it's a, that is a, it's a mystery for the ages. I am. I am in. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I, I don't. Thousands of years from now, why right? did Leonard Leo <laughs> put in writing <laughs> that no one should know? The smartest thing Trump ever did was not be able to use email. Uh, he's going to be convicted of something down the road. And I mean, that's sort of the big question that well, is Trump. And uh, everybody after now, after what's that called? The town hall. Yeah. <laughs> it was called the town hall <laughs> where they're told you can applaud and cheer, but you can't boo. <laughs> you know where that information came from? The information came from a Trump donor who was there. Oh, right. So a Trump donor who was there told somebody. Right. <laughs> oh, and, oh yes, by the way, they were bragging the, about it. The, yeah. The people from CNN told the group who were supposed to be undecided, I thought, mainly. Re Republican leaning, I think. Republican. Undecided. Or Repub undecided Republicans or Republican. I think it was undecided Republicans and Republican leaning. They were told by a donor, a Trump donor who was there, who I think was more than leaning. Right. Donating. <laughs> donating and leaning are very it's different. Super packing, probably. Yeah. He he said they they told us that we could cheer, but we couldn't boo. Yeah. If you thought that was on the up and up. <laughs> and, you know, that that was, oh, this was just Republican leaning yeah. and undecided and some Trump supporters because they did say this sounds on supports Trump. But I remember one young woman, I think this is the first time she'll vote. She's a college freshman and she's undecided. Uh, Ashley. Um, oh, yes. I love you, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> President Trump. Now, I think it's overinterpreted because we thought it was what they said it was, and it wasn't. And I think it scared the bejesus out of us because I thought we actually thought this is what it was, and it wasn't. Did I just, did, did what I say made sense? Oh, so clear. Um, <laughs> just crystal. But what I would say with Trump, and the thing that I keep thinking about whenever so I'm. Clear. Oh, so clear. Is very clear. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. Um, the thing I keep thinking about with Trump, and every time I'm sort of asked to like talk about something else, I think about this idea that like, I just have a hard time imagining that any hearts and minds are being changed at this point. Yeah, but he lost by 7 million votes. Right. And since losing by 7 million votes, he said, I didn't lose. And there was a, a riot and all this stuff has happened. There have been some hearts and minds, I believe, changed since. Now, we have a problem, which is we have Biden, who I think, as you were saying, has done some great stuff and some great stuff that maybe people don't give him enough credit for. Right. But there is the 86 years old thing, which is a real thing. I am not so worried about the age thing. Okay. okay. Can I tell you why? Sure. I mean, look, if he dies, all bets are off and who the fuck knows what happens. Excuse my French. Am I allowed to curse? Maybe not. Well, you're not allowed to say if he dies. Right. Okay. But <laughs> obviously, I just think that him running against Donald Trump, who's three years younger than he is. And, you know, he makes a lot more sense than Donald Trump. And he sounds great. Yeah, no, does he, he makes a lot more sense to you. But he's, I mean, I heard a presser on the day the Eugene case it was decided. I was listening to this presser on the debt ceiling and he was as deft as anyone and I thought, you know, this guy's going to be fine. I mean, there's so much anxiety about him. But, you know, remember the State of the Union. He did great. I mean, you know, if I could point to a bunch. I am of not challenging that. Right. I am not challenging his ability to be as sharp as a tack at 86 or to make it there. Like Nikki Haley said, he'll probably be dead. <laughs> Did you say that? Yes. Nikki that's, Haley. That's a little artless. You know, my yeah. mother-in-law turned 100 about a week ago. I call her on her birthday and she said, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and which I thought well, that was great. My only thing is I asked someone about his gait 
which bothers me. He right. has a little stiffness in his gait. Right. And I asked the doctor about that, and they said, oh, uh, your ligaments get stiffer as you get older. And I went like, so that's it. That's the thing that bothers us. Well, and then I was thinking like FDR. Couldn't walk. His gait was awful. <laughs> I mean, I would say with Biden, I mean, he works out like every morning he gets on the Peloton and he watches Morning Joe. I don't get on the Peloton in the morning. I do, but I don't watch Morning Joe. But I'm just saying. I don't get on the Peloton. (laughs) Every morning he does that. I mean, you know, you think Donald Trump gets on the Peloton every morning? (laughs) (laughs) But he still has. I mean, give him credit for eating hamburgers and French fries. And ice cream. And ice cream and having all this uh, energy, which it comes from a deep, deep sickness, <laughs> but it's still there. I mean, that was, he was very vigorous. Oh, by the way, he said one smart thing in the whole thing, I thought. Right. You want to hear it? Yes. Okay. This is Trump in the uh, town hall. So she said, uh, is Putin a war criminal? Right. And of course he is. And Trump put it, didn't want to say he was a war criminal, of course, right. but he put it this way. He said, well, look, if you call him a war criminal, <laughs> he's much less likely to end the war. Because once the war ended, he'll be tried as a war criminal. <laughs> <laughs> and I went like, that was, that was smart. <laughs> My, honestly, remember when he said, Clapper told me, I don't see why it wouldn't be Russia. Oh, that was. He was asked, Clapper, your own intelligence people say that Russia involved itself in our election. Right. Yes. I I don't know why it would be Russia. (laughs) Right. And then, but then he went back. Remember, he got so much criticism, said, no, what I meant was, I don't know why it wouldn't be Russia. (laughs) That was the one time he like admitted an error. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be Russia. Right? Was the, was the, I meant to say why it wouldn't be. Right? <laughs> that was the Helsinki, Helsinki meeting. A brilliant. Yeah, yeah the another, Helsinki press conference and right. the meeting <laughs> and press conference. I don't see why it would be Russia. <laughs> Where Putin gave him a not bugged soccer ball. Well, speaking of which, the Durham investigation. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your take on the Durham investigation. I, I, you know, I'm I'm a little disappointed that Durham didn't. We didn't get to see more of him because of his facial hair. Um, the Durham investigation, he didn't find anything. I mean, that was so disappointing for Republicans. But the report on it, his report still said there was there was stuff there. Well, he said the FBI shouldn't have investigated. Right. And, okay, that's that's the bottom line. Right. But you know, that was really I mean, of course they should have been I mean, like the Mueller report was damning, so Trump's people got ahead of it, right? And we're like, don't pay any attention to this. I know what that was that that the um the the uh, Justice Department shouldn't have investigated it was someone said in the report, we got to put something for the Fox people to say. Right. But yeah, I mean, I, it just I think they're very disappointed. I think it was a hard day for them. And then remember earlier in that week, the Republicans found that there was that uh, he they couldn't really pin anything on on Joe Biden. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you uh, something else. Uh, let's say Trump uh, loses this time. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And then tries again in 28, but doesn't get the nomination or just loses again. Right. Do you think at that point he'll say, okay, we're going to start the Trump Museum? (laughs) That's right. I'm going to start raising money for the Trump Museum. (laughs) This is like the most comedic and demented <laughs> part of this whole story is that or library library right, library a library seems much more likely because the you Trump know if library his love of books and literature but like the obama library where obama stole all these <laughs> these secret documents to be stored 
in the library. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's right. Uh, Trump is very mad at Obama, Obama for being born in Kenya. The reference there is uh, on, in this uh, town hall meeting, he said that Obama has stolen, I don't know if he put a number on it, a huge number right. of uh, secret documents. And what he's referring to is that when you do a library, <laughs> right. man, you know what? Trump should have said, I was saving those from the library. <laughs> My God, the guy's slow. <laughs> He's had all this time to think about that. Okay, I mean, that's where those documents went to, and they're being kept by the archives. Right. It's being administered exactly as you should. Right. Which is what the Obama administration has done with anything like that. That's what he's referring to. That's why she could have said something like, sir, <laughs> Mr. President, I'm sorry, but he didn't steal any documents. Those, right. are, those are being kept by the National Archives for his library. That's right. what you're referring to. And then he could have called her you what, a nasty person. Yeah, you're nasty. A nasty. You're a nasty person. You know what you say then when you say, really? That's what you say. <laughs> Don't you say that? You go, really? I don't know. She's 31 years old. You think you would have given this to a little bit, someone with more experience. I think she's very smart and they gave her a pretty impossible Impossible. Task yeah. And all that. But uh, somebody with more experience in that kind of situation. Yeah, you're right. She is. She, she, she rightly freaked out, I would think, at a certain point. I mean, if it had been me, there was not, you know, those couple days before I was like, man, I mean, that is like the anxiety dream to end all anxiety dreams. You wake up and you're going to interview a person you know is both a serial, right? Has numerous allegations of sexual harassment and really assault. So he's a little scary. But she knew he wasn't going to assault her. Right. But I'm just saying, like, you're, this is an underlying anxiety. I mean, if it were me, I would have been quite anxious. And also, he's really just run roughshaw over everyone constantly. Oh, yeah. But they have a lot of people with experience. Well, he clearly been in doesn't the, respect women, too. Yeah, that might have been uh, uh, another thing to think about. You know, they didn't handle it as well as they could have. <laughs> Let's put it that way. That keeps yeah. my options open at CNN. <laughs> I mean, I, but I also think, I mean, I think, look, I mean, if we're just going to go into this for another minute, the guy, if he's a Republican nominee, I mean, the, you can't, I mean, you're going to have to do some amount of covering him. I mean, obviously you're going to have to be careful, but you can't just ignore the Republican nominee. No, 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 no. But, you know, in, in 16, for example, <laughs> right. what CNN did was. Uh, the Trump plane is right. is, is right. Uh, approaching right. the uh, Omaha airport. Let's cut there. Right. Let's watch it circle. Right. Okay. And uh, right. just keep it there so that people can anticipate what's going to come up. And we'll put our reporter there going, the Trump air Trump is landing now. That means in just 45 minutes, he'll be in front of this crowd. So we're going to stay on this. Right. And let's cut to the crowd. They're booing me. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda, uh, yeah, they're calling me a uh, traitor and throwing stuff at me. <laughs> but uh, at least we know that Trump will be here in 25 minutes, so they'll turn their attention more to him than, ah! Oh. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Well, thanks, Bob. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, see, uh, we see him now getting into the limo. And heading over to the venue, uh, evidently on the plane, he ate a hamburger. Right. <laughs> it's true. With a knife and fork. Do you think he'll talk about uh, how Mexico is going to pay for the wall again? I kind of guarantee it, Brenda. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I think they're a little bit smarter about that now. No, no, no. And Zucker uh, finally, at some point, said they made a mistake. But that's what it was. And, you know, I had been uh, campaigning for uh, Hillary a lot during that campaign. And Hillary would say to me, uh, oh, Huma and I w watch those all the time. I mean, we just think they're hilarious. Right. 
which is another sad thing I just said. This has always been the disconnect with the Democratic Party, right? Is that it's a big tent, it's more popular, our legislators are smarter, but it doesn't mean that we win. Yeah. Okay. There's so much (laughs) there for me. (laughs) Right? I mean... I think we're better motivated... (laughs) Two. <laughs> but if you look at ballot initiatives, right? I mean, a great example is ballot initiatives. You put these ballot initiatives in red states and voters are like, hell yeah. You know, do you want poor kids to get free breakfast? Right. Do you want to expand Medicare and Medicaid? Yeah, they want that stuff. It's well, that's amazing. If you look at the states who were for expanding uh, Medicaid and I'm talking about literal Medicaid expansion. And the last five states, I, I've memorized this, uh, to do that were Idaho. <laughs> this is by ballot initiative, by right. ballot initiative. Idaho, Nebraska, Utah, Oklahoma, and Missouri. Yeah. And you know why? Because guess who it works great for? Rural hospitals. Rural hospitals you have to pay for emergency care for people who don't have Medicaid. You can't turn down someone in an emergency room, right? Yeah. So they go in, they don't have Medicaid, you eat it. Not anymore in those states with Medicaid expansion. Yeah. So what happened is all these rural hospitals have a lot more money and they can expand their care. They can buy more technology. Very often the rural hospitals became the largest employee in the in the county in these places. So all these red states have voted for it because they heard from their red relatives. Boy, this is good. And I mean, it's really, I mean, that's what's so interesting about it. And, and you know, Republicans as a response have wanted to raise the threshold for ballot initiatives to 60% because they've on, found- On all kinds of things. Right. Because they've found that these ballot initiatives are too popular. But I mean, that is, a, I think that that's a pretty good case for how Democrats could message better. Like if your ideas are wildly popular- Say something about them. Right. Yet in Texas refuses to adopt it and be the best thing for Texans. But if you look at the states who don't have Medicaid expansion, it's the Confederacy and Wisconsin and I think Wyoming, I think. But, you know, and what happens there is that these rural hospitals close and you have these healthcare deserts and you have pregnant women driving, you know, 10 hours this is to get a baby, not to have an abortion. <laughs> right. But I mean, I'm <laughs> just, just make saying. make that clear. Right. Because but you have. When yes. you talk about pregnant women driving lately, the topic <laughs> has become something else. Right. You know but how you, I open my, my act? If I'm in a blue state, which normally I am, it's just uh, anybody here from out of state to get an abortion. <laughs> So now what other state? Well, passed? North Carolina passed this 12 week ban, which is actually sort of a in some ways it's the worst possible. Did North Carolina do that since the uh, Democrat jumped to? Yeah. Now, she ran as pro-choice when she ran. She had a case of the Kirsten cinemas. <laughs> She's going to be known as a Kirsten one termer, right? I think. <laughs> I mean, she? I hope. I think she's very, very, very low approval in uh, Arizona. I'm not just talking from Democrats and Republicans and independents. I meant everybody. And I think Ruben Gallego has been really out there working hard to and has. And, you know, he started running pretty much before she even switched parties. So Mifa Priston, did I say my theory? Tell us your theory. Oh, it's a little like uh, the 14th Amendment, which yeah. is, uh, you know, give them two days and will they <laughs> vote to tank the world economy, the Supreme Court? Right. And Mifa Pristone, it'll go to them. It sounds like it because the Fifth Circuit, it sounds like it'll send it to them. They're going to go like, we had said that this is it. This is the last time we have to decide on abortion. And now it goes to the states. It all goes to the states. It's going to the states. Oh, no. Now we have to do it again. And there'll be those, the Clarence Thomases and the Litos and maybe Gorsuch, who are going to go like, yeah, I want to stop people from having abortions. 
And I think Coney Barrett, of course, does too. Right. But do they want everyone to go like, okay, not only are we corrupt, <laughs> 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 but not, and not only did Dobbs, like, it was wildly unpopular, but we're, we're happy about that. But we said that was the last time we we're going to have to do this. <laughs> and now we're going to have to do it again. And also, we're going to have to say that the FDA really has doesn't have the right to decide <laughs> if drugs are right. safe or not. And I'm wondering if it goes there, how they decide. That's what I wonder. Well, I the thing about, you know, deciding that the FDA no longer has approval for things that they've approved 20 years ago or even more than 20 years ago, I, I think that's going to that's a pretty sticky wicket to start going down. You know, look, you have two, you have the drug companies, which are like a major force in American democracy. And I mean that, of course, ironically, you know, they don't want this. I mean, this would be a nightmare for them. And I know they are attacking the administrative state, right? Right. Uh, of course, they, they, they don't want the EPA to regulate CO2. Right. Okay. And they, it's a Chevron doctrine they want to get rid of and all that shit. But still, the FDA right. and, the, and the pharmaceutical companies, who I'm sure have given them a lot of money before, it's going to be, going to be interesting when it's going to go to them. I'm almost absolutely certain. So that's going to be, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't understand the hesitation to term limit the Supreme Court, if nothing else. Well... You know, uh, Jamie Raskin just signed on to the thing to expand the court. I mean, look, expand it, but I, I just don't feel like Biden has the appetite for that. But at least term limit these people out so they have to go back well, and forth. That's going to be a tough one. But you go going forward, you know, the idea going forward, right? Give them 18 year terms. Right. And each president gets one per term, I guess. Right. Yeah. It works out that way. That makes the most sense. I mean, I think Republicans won't like it. Yeah, but the thing about that idea is um, what president with, with his own Senate in the majority is going to go like, well, the next Supreme Court justice <laughs> is going to be the first one. <laughs> not with So th this is why I've been sort of gaming this idea. And I kind of think that that doesn't happen. But that, that's why. You understand my logic there. Yeah. I mean, I think it's hard to imagine. But I, that's why I feel like something that's just waiting for another president to do the right thing. It'll work if there's a Democrat. It won't work if there's a Republican. And I also think at this point, Trump appointed three justices, one that would, should have been an Obama appointment. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Merrick Garland was, you know, uh, again, Scalia died in February. Right. Okay. And McConnell said, well, there's already been votes cast in, in New Hampshire. Right. And that was like, you know, 3,000 votes. And then they swear in Coney Barrett eight days before the election in which millions of actual votes for president, not in the primary in New Hampshire, but for president had been. And then and then Coney Barrett complains that people say the court is uh, partisan. And where does she do it? <laughs> at the McConnell Center at the University of Kentucky. The McConnell Center for Irony. Um, <laughs> we are so proud of the Irony Center here. <laughs> They're very proud of themselves. I mean, that is the thing. That you, you do see this again and again, there's, the Supreme Court is so partisan and so emboldened and so furious when you say they're either partisan or emboldened. <laughs> I want to hear an Alito speech on that. <laughs> right, Joke, it's a coming. Big, you go overseas. It's coming, right? Sarcastically then. joking. Oh, to be a, a fly on a Harlan Crow private jet trip. And also, I was just talking to some about this the other day is like you think there'll be more of this coming out <laughs> and then when i as soon as that word came out of my mouth i went yes of course there's of course there's gonna, there's be, gonna be yeah no i mean the 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 harlan crow private jet vacation situation has been 
absolutely incredible stuff. And, you know, I mean, buying the mother's house, paying for the grandnephew to go to boarding school. And I mean, paying for the mom to stay there. I mean, right. they, they well, bought the house, but she lives there and they're renovating they, it and they renovated it. <laughs> well, you don't want her to live somewhere that's not nice. And not with a hel- not with, with the helicopter pad, right? And and also Harlan had some business before the court. Not exactly clear. Okay, Gorsuch had this land he couldn't sell, and then like <laughs> what was it? Seven weeks or seven days right. after he gets in, he sells it. Yeah, to a guy who has an incredible amount of stuff before the court. You know, and then there's also, I mean, Roberts' wife works in, you know, executive well, that's search. that's feminism. <laughs> that's feminism. Hey, now listen, I'm the guy here. You're the gal, as right. we used to say. Yes. I'm the guy, you're the gal. I'm going to defend this. <laughs> it used to be the Supreme Court justices' wives, because of sexism, couldn't have careers. Right, you're but right. But now they do. <laughs> this is a huge step Getting forward. Getting paid <laughs> to place <laughs> lawyers in firms, of, you know, finding fee, right. place lawyers in firms that argue before the Supreme Court. That's feminism. <laughs> That's, That's right. not corruption. That's, That's right. feminism. Fa- such a good point there. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very thoughtful. Well, Molly, this has been this has been so much fun and so easy. Oh, thank I'm you. Gonna do, I'm gonna just do these from now on. That's which I, means I, you're I, on every one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it, man. Well, I I hope you enjoyed uh, listening. That beautiful music is by Leo Kotke, the great Leo Kotke. I want to thank Peter Ogburn for producing this podcast. We'll talk again next week. Mm-hmm.